Hello, Art History 2, first lesson, and I, pr and, I, and I promise they're not all gonna have three parts. It's just, the Renaissance is so exciting. I love this work so much, and I think some of you will love it too, because it's really some of the greatest um, art that has ever been done and has been recorded. Um, and we are, you know, we started a little bit with the Gothic, right? The Middle Age, you know, the end of the Roman Empire, eight or nine centuries, you know, from four or five hundred until twelve hundred, that's called the Middle Ages, and then the International Gothic, the great cathedrals with the glass, stained glass, you know, the, search, the sense of like, oh my God, the light of God is coming through the window and it's hitting me. Then we go on to Italy, which is going, we're going to stay in Italy for a while. And what's happening in Italy? That boot that sticks out into the Mediterranean, it's getting influence from France, the Gothic, the cathedrals, you know, the drama, the emotion of religion, of deeply felt religion. Also, it's getting what? Splendor, beauty from Constantinople, Istanbul, Byzantium, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire in Istanbul that's sending, you know, the gold, the glitter, the brightness. And then Italy is also going in. They're looking in a mirror at themselves and they're remembering, gee, we are the descendants of the Romans. Gee, look at those frescoes from antiquity. Look at those naked bodies of powerful men and, you know, voluptuous women. Look at, you know, like they're starting to rediscover their past and say, wow, it's okay. Maybe we don't have to be covered all the time. So there is that. And they're also discovering space with the awareness of the body and the muscles and the shapes and stuff. They also start seeing that, you know, there is space around the bodies. There is space in a room. There is space of buildings beside each other. How do you do that convincingly? So that is the beginning of the Renaissance. Now, before, um, before we're, we're now in the Quattrocento. We went from Cimabui, Duccio, and Giotto, the great masters of the 1300, right? That are mixing a lot of the Gothic drama with the gold of Istanbul. In Italy, now we're going to the actual 1400, to the to the Renaissance or pre-Renaissance as such, or actually the Renaissance. This is the Renaissance, and basically, um, one of the funny things, you know, about about uh, this era is that a lot of the humanism, sort of the worshiping of the human body, the worshiping of the human spirit, no consideration for Christianity, because this was before Christianity. This is the Rome before Christianity, the Greeks before Christianity. A lot of that had been lost with Christianity, because Christianity, but guess what? In a weird turn of events, the Islamic people, which were under the Romans, they inherited a lot of that perhaps in the literature especially, okay? So basically, the Renaissance has to go to Islamic texts, the Renaissance has to go, Ita Renaissance Italians have to go to other cultures to get their own heritage back. Because in their own country, in their own area, it had become hidden, it had been lost. That's why we call it Renaissance, the rebirth, okay? And we already showed you the sculpture of the Pisano brothers when we were talking about the Gothic, you know, the Pisano guy, how the shapes are getting rounder, the virgin looks, you know, like a female, that kind of thing. But we cannot talk about the Renaissance without talking about poetry, because part of the, the beauty of the Renaissance starts also with poetry, not just with painting and sculpture, and it starts with a guy called Petrarch, a poet called Petrarch, and, um, and, his, and later Dante, you've heard about Dante, Dante's Inferno, Dante's Paradiso, you know, and basically we're talking about dolce stil nuovo, the new sweet style. So there's a style in poetry that's emerging, okay? And basically, the, what's, what's Renaissance about this style is that they're obsessed. Petra and Dante, they're obsessed not with Christianity, but with the gods of old, with the gods in the Roman pantheon, with the Greek gods, with the characters from antiquity. It's like, oh my God, if this antiquity is cool, right? They're, they're sort of really, really exciting to discover that past. And we also have Petrarch, we have Dante, and uh, we have Boccaccio, 
Boccaccio, also another famous writer. Those are the famous writers. And Boccaccio wrote about Giotto. Boccaccio actually wrote about Giotto and, and his art, okay? So um, Giotto was really called the Petrarch of painting. So Petrarch was the most famous poet. Giotto becomes a very powerful painter, so he's called the Petrarch of painting. So basically, um, the main reason that these folks are remembering antiquity is that they feel it's a lot more real than the Gothic. The Gothic is like cartoons. It's, you know, very intense, very powerful, but it's, it's like a caricature, you know, it's like a caricature. Whereas the antiquity paintings, the antiquity murals, the antiquity sculptures are like, oh my God, they look a lot more real. So that's why we're, we're, we're worshiping uh, antiquity for its uncompromising realism, okay? It's like today, oh my God, that photograph is so accurate. The painting, eh, I don't know, the guy can't paint fingers, you know, or something like that. Anyway, um, we talk about the Renaissance, we talk about Italy. We talk about it, the, the Renaissance in Italy, we have to go to Florence, okay? Uh, we have to go to Florence, and Florence is a small city-state, right? And it's always in war with its nemesis called Milan, right? So you have Florence versus Milan. It's like these two city-states are always competing for resources, for power, and for prestige, right? So I built something in Florence, the guy in Milan built something. The guy in Milan uh, contracts a, a famous painter, the guy in Florence wants to do the same thing. So you have this sort of competing war and also cultural competition, okay? And in the context of this war, in the context of this war, in the 1400, um, Florence <coughs> asks for, uh, uh, creates a contest to design the doors for the baptistery, okay? The doors for the baptistery. So this was background, but now we're gonna have to get rid of it. Too much information. And here we are, um, now we have come to Florence. Now we're in ground zero of the Italian Renaissance, the city-state of Florence. Remember, always versus Milan, okay? And in Florence, in the 1400, in competition against Milan, they designed a contest to make the doors, to do the doors, of the baptistery. What is the baptistery in Christian religion? It's a place where you put water that is consecrated, that it's made holy, and you and you uh, bathe the little child or at least her or his head with this holy water to signal that the child is part of the religion, right? That the child is part of, of, of in grace, right? It's, it's like a sign. So this baptistery, it's separate from the church, it's a very interesting building. You're looking at it now. And this baptistery now has a, uh, has a what you would call it, a contest to do the doors of the baptistery, okay? And uh, basically, uh, we, have, we have this incredible, this incredible doors. Um, that were that were there by the guy Pisano. Remember the sculpture that we know from earlier on? The doors were by Pisano, and uh, and here you know you have some doors by Pisano. Look at the doors. Oops, sorry, I got a phone call, but I'm not gonna take it. Don't worry, I'll, I'll tell him. You know, tell him I'm busy. Um, pardon me. Uh, turn off your phones, by the way. You know, I don't want any interruptions. So here we are with the doors by Pisano. And, uh, and these were the old doors, and they're great. And look at the roundness, look at the roundness of the figures in the old doors. But now we have a contest and we have two great artists competing. One is Filippo Brunelleschi, an architect. He's going to lose. Filippo Brunelleschi is not going to win the contest for the doors of the Baptistery of Florence, you know? In this, uh, in this 1400, it's really 1401, the contest happens. Uh, but then we have another great artist, Ghiberti, okay, Lorenzo Ghiberti. And then look at Brunelleschi, look at Ghiberti. I'm putting both side by side their entrances, their entry to the contest. Again, there's a competition 
and the scene is supposed to be when um, when uh, Isaac, the son of Abraham, the one son of Abraham, is about to be killed by his father. The angel of God, you know, like God told uh, Abraham, "Give me a test of your of your of your faith, of your of your loyalty. Kill your one son." And you know, you know, Abraham's bringing his kid, you know, to the top of a mountain. You know, the kid's getting suspicious, like, "Hey, Dad, what are we gonna sacrifice?" Oh, don't worry, God will provide. And so they're going to the top of the mountain, and then the angel of the Lord stops Abraham from killing his son. Let's take a break. <laughs> 